this next song is called uh, The Scavenger's Daughter, and it is about um, a uh, Spanish Inquisition era torture device consisting of a steel ring placed around the outside of your shins and across your back, and your arms across your chest, and slowly tightened until pieces of you splinter and crush. And it's, it's really kind of about how I, I imagine that's what it's sort of like to be in a relationship with it's called The Scavenger's Daughter. Feel free to Google that. Could all these songs and these movements, could it all just be in vain? 
as I know is I can't live in the middle. I was born to eat flies, spread my bones across the plains. So measure me for wings, cause it's dry as your eyes were that night. When I recall it, I can still smell the rain. Take my time, make it easy. I'll figure this thing out in my own way. And I hope that you know I'd have taken you with me. And that's gonna hurt someday. Red Radio Productions South and Gulfport Main Street Association invite you to downtown Gulfport, February 26th, for Roots Rhythm and Arts Festival, featuring live performances by Flow Tribe, Small Town Revival, Ben Lawson and the Family. Grits and green. I remember back when you were itching and scratching. You weren't quite on the ups, begging someone to cash. And karate kids. Live painters, Andrew Switzer, Greg Knoll, and Robbie Almanac. Food trucks, art vendors, kids' activities, street performers. Plus the crew of Gemini's Day Parade rolls at two. So bring your chair and groove in the streets with us on February 26th for Roots Rhythm and Arts Festival. <laughs> what is wrong with this kid? Who go. brought him? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, hi. I'm Dominique. I'm a host at Rock Lab Television and Crescent City Gumbo and uh, just all around insane kind of... Um, I don't know. She says she thinks I'm on crack kind of deal. I don't know. 100 percent. 100 percent. Amber McLean, co-founder and public relations officer for Rock Lab TV. Rock Lab started in deep down in the dirty depths of that mind of Dustin Lanier. He came up with this uh, idea and uh, he was he's he, I don't know. He, he he decided one day he wanted to start a music television type thing and he came up with rock lab well because of people were making fun of him calling him a mad scientist the doctor he was in working in the rock lab and he was just it's like dude what are you doing you some kind of weirdo and uh he decided one day to st start uh, he wanted to he wanted to work on rock lab television i guess i don't really know how did that happen well yeah, well, I mean, Dustin it, should be answering this question, not me. Right? What's wrong with that? Um, he actually, I he, you know, he mentioned probably he's been thinking about it for about four years, and I don't know, just one Sunday evening, he was like, "Man, you know, MTV, like how MTV used to be before it became all this reality and game shows and everything but music television," and then the ball just started going from there. We came up with a name that evening and. He got in contact with him, and then it just took off. Wait, y'all got in touch with me that night? You think no, this was four years night. ago? No, this, no. Is, this is less than a month ago. It was December no. 3rd, if I'm not mistaken. When it was December, December 3rd. December 3rd. He started thinking about this over the past four years. What an idiot. I don't he should have done this a long time ago. Day. Do you need a time stamp, no, Where is too? Dustin? He should be he should I don't be know here. where he's at. Punk. For real. Well, our, our first episode took place at the Basin Music Hall in Baton Rouge with um, three bands, uh, Silver Dose, Lower Line, and Liliac. Uh, Liliac's National Act, Silver Dose, Lower Line, local, locally well-known bands, really good bands. And uh, the idea was just to get in there, talk to the bands, and ask them what they thought about how things were going and uh, the, the venue they were at, and talk to some of the audience members to see what they thought about the show, and talk to uh, people at, at the venue as well, and see what they thought about what was going on and how they felt music, uh, or how, how they felt things were progressing since our big meltdown recently. Um, but uh, it, it, the whole concept behind it is just to um, let everyone out there know, educate the masses on on what's happening musically in our scene, but not just our scene, it, it nationally, as far as we can reach. 
So far, we haven't reached very far, but we are working on another level that, um, that I'm used to, that's for sure. And I really appreciate the fact that y'all included me in this. This is absolutely amazing for me. But um, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, Basin Music Hall was great. The, the sound there was amazing. The bands were amazing. And then um, y'all went to the Belux. Is it yeah. Belux? Belux. 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 And uh, I wasn't there for that show. Kevin Harris took, took the helm on that one. And uh, yeah. y'all interviewed. Um, who so was it was Rise the Phoenix. Envision and then Artifice was there that evening, so yeah, that and was pretty I, cool. And that that one went really well. That was Good. that was about the time that the the video quality got stepped up. Dustin yeah. Dustin had a, a friend of his that does videography, shoots music videos and things like that, and he asked him to be a part of it, and uh, sent him over the episode one, and he said, "Well, let me know what you think." And just a few minutes later, he called him back and said, "Put the put your cell phone down. I got this." And with 4K cameras, uh, movie quality lighting, and things like that, uh, our our quality went from okay to wow. Episode three took place at the Reef, um, at the Sky Bar at the Reef on the on the beach in Biloxi, right? Yep. Okay. That is correct. And that was a lot of fun. We got to hang out with some no name band, Silent Trust. Yeah, that. And... No, Silent Trust was amazing. Mm. Oh, and some other guy from Red Radio was there yeah. with his band. Um, what was it called? What was um, that, uh... A, a cult classic. A cult classic. Yeah. Yeah. They were actually really good. It was they really, really cool hearing. First two, time I've seen them. Two person awesome. band. Just it was really thick. The sound was. was thick. That bass guitar sounds amazing. It but was um, good. again, the the quality at that one was amazing because Nick showed up with all of his gear and did the 4K stuff. So uh, the idea, I guess, the concept behind it is to bring people um, some information and a, a different look at the way. Uh, venues and bands and audience members all interact at shows and uh, we're bringing it the best we can and uh, was it music television uh, the way it was meant to be no music the television way the way it be. should be well it looks like we're going to be hanging out with saliva in a, in a couple of months uh, is that i yeah. think that's oh, what yeah, yeah. so we're, we're stepping up we're stepping up our game and we want to bring the best quality and the best entertainment the best value that we possibly can to right. anyone out there that's interested in what's going on the guy that uh oh there was a homeless gentleman out front of the basin music hall that we uh we did an interview with he offered to do a caricature of a friend of ours for a cigarette and my buddy's like, well, dude, I'll give you a cigarette, but I, I know somebody you might want to talk to. Mm -hmm. And he comes inside and gets us. So we, while, I, while interviewing this gentleman on the street, he does a caricature of myself. And uh, I, I'd be nice if we had it. I can send you a picture of it. And, uh, and it was really, it's really neat. And that's, I guess that's kind of where the, uh, that kind of came from because they, I was holding the microphone and everything. It said oh, Merry yeah. Christmas from Rock Lab Television. So, yeah. Sure. So this right here, as soon as he found out that we were able to go back into the green room and interview them, I mean, he started hyperventilating. I was like, what do you need? Do you need a drink? What kind of drink do you need? Do you need non-alcoholic? Do you need alcoholic? I mean, it was just a big thing because one, we were doing our first, you know, episode, but two, I mean, they are, they are very big. Um, so he was a little kid in a candy store it was quite exciting I, I it was because i absolutely love doing this it's a lot of fun for me and um like i tell people i'm a third generation car salesman that doesn't sell cars so i need to find a way to get it out because if i don't i'm gonna explode and uh liliac i've been i've been watching liliac for years i've been following them not 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 really following but i've been watching them and they started off uh five seven years ago and really young on the on the piers in santa monica and uh, during the interview, I, I told them that I started watching them and the dad, Papa Liliac, asked me what was the first song. And I said, well, that's easy. That was Crazy Train. Y'all were playing on the pier in Santa Monica. And he's like, wow. So, yeah. But um, they were very professional, yes. uh, very wise beyond their years. Uh, yes, very and all much of so. them. They were very, very, very well. I don't know. They, they did a great job. The, Liliac was, was very professional. For their for their ages, that's for sure. Oh yeah, so. definitely. It was a lot of fun getting to meet them. Uh, I, I don't fanboy. I don't do. I don't freak out when I when I get to meet uh, celebrities and stuff. I just like the fact that I get to do this. And all of the bands that we've um, interviewed so far, they're like super excited about what we're doing. 
not only is our fan base growing, but uh, Rock Lab Television itself is, is growing. We're expanding and we're reaching across the pond. We have a United Kingdom division of Rock Lab Television where Matt James, a buddy over there, is doing the same thing we are, talking to bands, talking to venues and the crowd and the audience to get their take on what's happening. And uh, I, I think it'd be great to get uh, a little, little difference around the world and see how it's going. And uh, Matt's been great. He's been sending us all kinds of wonderful information. Well, I mean, we're all over Facebook. They can, you know, instant message. They can email us, uh, Instagram. I mean, they can look up, you know, all of the others that are a part of the team and get in contact with them. Uh, we're constantly, you know, putting stuff out there and are constantly kind of behind the scenes, getting in touch with people and finding out shows that are coming up. Red Radio Productions South wants to invite you to watch our newest webcast, Mixed Tapes. The show will feature music videos as well as past live performance videos from the Red Radio Show. Tune in Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Make it happen. 
If you let me, I will rob you of your spark. Whatever you got that keeps you on that side of the edge. Just know I've got two hands, not a whole lot to lose. And we're both living on that ledge. My name is Stephen Wade Scott. Um, I write songs and I play guitar. I uh, played guitar for longer than I spent most of my time writing songs. I play other stuff too. I was here recently with Galen playing mandolin. Um, uh, predominantly uh, these days I'm known for writing incredibly sad, depressing music. Um, that, that's uh, sort of my wheelhouse. I grew up in a bakery. My dad owned one. So I didn't live in it. It wasn't like like that movie with um, uh, what's her name uh, who went to Harvard, where they like live in the Walmart while she's pregnant. It wasn't like that. It was um, it was my dad and my mother and father owned a bakery um, in Richland, donut shop, and I spent a lot of time there flipping hash browns and making apple fritters and um, yeah, sneaking girls in when it was closed and stuff like that. Yeah, sneaking girls into the donut shop when it was closed. Um, uh, uh, I miss, uh, I miss the apple fritters and I miss, uh, the cake, the, the cake donuts, because, um, if you are really versed in donuts and, um, the nature of them in donut shops around here, you'll realize that there is not a single place in the Southeastern United States where you can get an apple fritter worth of crap. And I've tried all of them and they're all too, um, they're all too, um, airy and they're made like donuts and they're not. Yeah, they're not dense enough. They don't have enough cinnamon. They don't have like the kind of burnt edges of them that is necessary. And um, uh, I, uh, I really miss the apple fritters. That was that when that shop closed. That was the last good apple fritter you could get in about four states. Um, I mean, it, it kind of sucks, <laughs> you know. Um, it's getting better. It's better than it was a year ago, certainly. Um, but I have started losing a lot of, I lost six gigs in December to Omicron, which is unfortunate because they didn't need to pick the coolest sounding letter of the Greek alphabet to screw up my holiday. But, um, but no, it's, uh, I know we're all sick of it. We're all really sick of it. Um, I really wish, uh, um, ah, oh, we won't get into that. I wish all kinds of things, but you know, um, it is, it is what it is. We're all sick of it. Um, but it's going to keep happening for a little bit longer. So, um, uh, but I'm definitely playing more than I was a year ago. Um, there's a lot of stuff opening back up. I'm able to travel a little bit more. I, I plan on spending a lot more time on the road next year. Um, the locals are kind of back open, so that's good. Mostly, I don't know. I, I kind of ride the line between East Nashville and um, like like downtown, and like I, I sort of like like I play a Telecaster real fast, but I also write real sad songs. And um, I wear boots, but I'm not like super attractive. So I find myself being like somewhere between like the sort of like outlaw songwriter, East Nashville people, and then the more mainstream music that I actually kind of hate that takes place in the rest of the city. So, um, uh, so I try to I try to stay on the fence there. Um, uh, these days, I spend uh, a lot more time. Uh, I'm honestly mostly at home and then doing stuff on the internet. But yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back on the road. This, uh, I've got a record that's going to be coming out next year. And uh, this record is the first one I've ever made that has my name on it. I've, I've been on a lot of them, uh, but as a guitar player. Uh, this is the first one that's like my name on the front. And if it sucks and people don't like it, then I have, I can't blame anybody else or like step out of the room. I have to be like, I have to just accept that I suck. So that's, uh, that's terrifying. I'll, I'll answer that two ways. One is, uh, obviously I had a whole lot of momentum going into the beginning of 2020 and then that whole crazy thing happened. And that, uh, that changed a lot. A lot of people I know, this is not just me. Tons of people have ridiculous amount of stories. You know what I mean? Like I was talking to Rashad not too long ago, blues kid. He was talking about how he had like a contract playing with a NBA team as like their house band. And like it, who thought they were going to cancel basketball? You know what I mean? Like, so, um, everybody has a story like that. Tons of momentum was lost and that's a killer when you're at a certain stage. So I'm kind of rebuilding a lot of, uh, what was there, but, um, uh, the other way, and, and I think it, it's going to come back. Things are coming to normal and I feel really good about kind of calling my shot where I'm going on my own.
But the other side of that is I will say I'm very happy and um, with where I'm at performance-wise and kind of what I do. Um, it took about damn near 20 years of playing music for most, some or all of my living at different points to get to the point where I felt really confident that when I walk in a room to do a particular thing that I am the person who is best in that room to do what that particular thing is. And um, that is a really massive step that I think makes a whole lot of things easier when you get um, confident enough to stop competing with people. Um, and you actually find that a lot of ego kind of falls away and you start learning from other people a lot more instead of feeling like you have to perform when off the stage. And um, uh, that that in the last couple years has been super refreshing. Uh, I've, uh, I, and I, as a result, I've made a lot of great friends and learned things that I didn't expect I would learn from other people and uh, found myself being a whole lot happier um, just in being settled in what I do and its value. And that's a pretty, that's a pretty good feeling. Um, uh, I, I spend a lot of time, uh, I, I stay pretty active on Instagram, the Facebook music page. I usually keep, uh, gigs on this. Everything, everything about me is Stephen Wade Scott, all three names. It's easy to Google. Um, I can be found in those places on TikTok, uh, Cash App, Venmo, um, PayPal. Uh, I don't have a Tinder account anymore. That was always a bad idea. So, um, none of those, um, but, um, but Insta is, uh, probably where I'm the most active, the socials, you got to do that stuff these days. If you don't, you, you publish or perish. My name of my selfie studio, um, is can't stop my selfie. And the reason why I started can't stop my selfie was because whenever I was pregnant, I was seeing one of my coworkers um, at the salon that I work at and I was on TikTok and I was showing her like TikTok videos of like all these kind of um, selfie museums, like basically rooms set up with different themes. And I really have always liked um, fashion and set up rooms to like take stuff. And then my boyfriend, he's also like a photographer. So I thought that would be cool to have one day. And so I just opened up um, Can't Stop My Selfie this year. So my room themes are, um, I have a claw machine room and it's got like a giant pool noodle that's like, looks like a claw for the claw machine with giant like teddy bears. Then I have a huge pink ball pit and it has like millions of balls in it. Like it's insane. Um, I have a cloud room with like a, a hand chair, like hand like literally like a hand and then I have um, a jet life one that's kind of like a private jet and I have a friend's room I have a retro 90s room I have a babe cave which is like super girly it's got like a pink couch and a lot of girly stuff it's got like cute little mean girls quotes in it all kinds of different things um, I really wanted to cater more towards women and young girls because I feel like that's mostly what kind of my target audience is going to come in um, but my back area because the shotgun style building um, my back area you can have like local photographers rent out we have like pull down backdrops and two fitting rooms so um, if people want to like change within the hour that they are um, paying for the selfie rooms they can change different outfits within that hour or the local photographers their clients can change into different outfits as well um, so my social media information, um, it's pretty much all the same. I, my Facebook is Can't Stop My Selfie. Um, I have an Instagram, Can't Stop My Selfie. And then I have a TikTok account, which I haven't really posted on it yet because I'm not really super TikTok savvy, but I have some friends that are. Um, so he's going to help me with that. Um, but pretty much everything is just the same, Can't Stop My Selfie. Okay. This song's about taking shit that doesn't belong to you. Or, or rather about the folly of believing things were yours in the first place. Give my regards to Mr. California. Girl, I hope he makes you feel better. I hope he gets you just a bit wetter than I ever could. I don't want to be misunderstood I only wish you think
things that are well and good. I hope he gives you good touches. And I'll be around as much as I can stand. But I've been lying down these days. Mr. California wants you teach me the way. Mr. Panama City Girl, I hope he rips apart his life for you Hope he leaves his wife for you Wouldn't that be pretty, you know I got goosebumps thinking about All the things you can become While I sit in this corner Cut myself on socks And chase away the numb Now you want to take back all the things you didn't say that tore us apart. You couldn't if I wanted you. You couldn't rip them out of my cold, dead heart. No, um, but I, uh, I, I'm obsessed with it. I spend way too much time in bed with my cat watching random TikToks. Uh, the TikTok algorithm is brilliant. It's so much better than all the others because I log on a TikTok and it instantly knows exactly what I want on my whole feed. It's like, you know, um, attractive person, um, funny cat person falling down how to fix a thing like that and then that just repeats over and over again and i'm like tiktok really gets me 
Um, the other ones don't, but TikTok really does. I appreciate it a lot. 